I still had no money and the pressure that was on me to win money just to feed the family, it was too hard to take and my performance was shown that I was getting beat every single week. You know, five all, three darts in my hand, if I win I won a grand, wow it's a mum's wage, and I'd miss it, lose a game and I'm back to, you know, what I'm going to do. I don't know, whether it's my old job, whether it's playing golf, whether it's being a dad, I want to be the best at anything that I do and I always believe that one day I will make it. People have interviewed me and you know they've brought the situation about the money. Yeah, I had 20 quid. So how did you first get into darts? So I used to play football, um, played at quite a good level and um, unfortunately it didn't work out for me. So got 16, 17 years of age, started going in the pub with my granddad and my dad and they've played all their lives. So just one day, I'll have a go, picked them up. Um, after a couple of times playing, I saw I was getting better, um, I just kind of really from there, playing with my granddad, my dad, my mates in the pub and probably after about 12 months um, I started getting to a level where I could play for the team um, and just started playing for pubs and then progressed from there really. What was your position and who did you play for and how far up did you get? So I was a goalkeeper, um, so when I was about nine years of age I got scouted for Stockport County, obviously I'm from Stockport so it was quite big for me, um, didn't make it. And then uh, got released from Stockport and then I got scouted for the Manchester United Goalkeeping Academy. It was like a feeder club for Man United mainly, but also other clubs. Um, got offered a contract for Glasgow Rangers. Family had to move, so we decided not to, not to go with it. Um, and then when I was 15, 16, I got released from the academy because I wasn't tall enough. Um, so I still continued to play football, play for a club called Cheadle Town, which was semi-pro. Probably played one, two seasons for them and then just chat in. Was that hard to take when, when you got released? It was, yeah, because as a kid growing up, everyone wants to be a footballer. Um, I thought I was a really good keeper, just my height went against me. So, yeah, it was hard, um, but things happen for a reason. I'm an hour data. And you've always been good with your hands. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, so when you first started taking up darts, you said you were naturally good, but obviously we've all, we've all thrown darts at the start and we're a bit all over the place. So was it a case of when you first started, you were throwing like straight, you're hitting 180s? No, not, not at all. Um, like I said, I was a goalkeeper. I played golf, I'm not a bad golfer. I used to play pool, so I think my hand-eye coordination is quite good, which I think you need to be an half-decent dart player. Um, but it was practice, you know. I knew I, w I could throw the dart, and you know, very quickly I got gone from hitting 26s to hitting 60s and tons very quickly. Um, and I thought, if I practice, you know, I will get better and better and better and I could practice more and more and more every week. I started to like it more and then all of a sudden it became like my main hobby. So I was practicing because I wanted to get better and uh, that's kind of how I got to a decent level which was pure, purely practice. And how did you go from that decent level to the PDC? So, <laughs> for not many people know this, but when I was about five years ago, maybe six years ago, I applied to get into the, the army. Um, I did an accountancy as a job, just one of these mornings just walked up and I, I just fancied it so I applied to get into the army and um, I did my basic training and then got released because of um, just like doctor's note really, um, me, me medical report sorry. So I got released and it was literally two weeks before Q school and the landlord at, uh, at the local pub said why don't you go to Q school? So I said I'm not that good yet, he said no come on, I said I ain't got the money to do to do Q school anyway and uh, he, he gave me the money and I won the tour card. Um, so that was kind of the start of it. Um, obviously back then I was still eligible to play on the youth tour so I was playing the youth tour and also the pro tour. I think I won it too soon um, which is why I lost it after two years. The development tour helped me massively um, so yeah so that's kind of how I got, got into the PDC. And in your early years in darts were you still working full time as an accountant? Yeah so it was only I think it was two years in February, I quit my job. Um, always worked since the day I left school. Uh, I was trained to be an accountant. So I was one year off being a fully qualified accountant when I decided to stop doing my studying and use that time to, to practice more with my darts. So I was still working, but I stopped doing my studying to, to concentrate more on my darts because I felt it was one or the other. I had to either finish my studying and become an accountant and put darts on the back burner or the other way around and luckily I chose the right one. <laughs> sure. 
and then you won your tour card back. Yeah. But was it still quite difficult in those in the early years until you know 2018 when it all took off? It was, yeah. I lost my card. Um, I think it was 2017. Went back to Q School. Didn't win my card. I was close, but I didn't win it. And probably to be fair, that was the best thing that ever happened to me because. I think you don't realise how important having a tour card is to you until you, you lose it. And I spoke to a number of players, my good mate Andy Bolton, he's done exactly the same. You kind of took, take it for granted and then when it's gone, you're absolutely mortified. Um, so it kind of gave me that hunger back for darts. The year on the Challenge Tour were brilliant, get me a lot of confidence back. Um, and then yeah, and then I won my card back in the 2018. Um, started off okay uh, and then I quit my job. It was a massive risk for the family. I had nothing. Um, with the help of my management team, they got me some good sponsors to give me enough money to pay bills, etc. But I still had no money, and the pressure that was on me to win money just to feed the family, it was too hard to take, and my performance was shown that. I was getting beat every single week, and I was like, what's going on, Nathan? You know, you're a lot better than this. Um, and it was about the October, no, August time, I made the decision that I'm going to have to go back to work because I'm not ready to quit my job and become a full-time full -time player. And in that period, so from February to the August, did it change like how you played darts in both practice and in the games? You're thinking, this is, I need this for money, like, I need this to win these games? Yeah, so like I said, I quit my job. Um, so that gave me more time to, to practice and I was, that, that, that was the annoying thing. I was doing more practicing than I've ever done in my life. That's why I quit my job. Uh, you hear about like Phil, he used to do eight hours a day. You hear all these players that put five, six, seven hours a day in. And that's what I thought I needed to do. And I was doing six to eight hours a day. And I was turning up to events feeling brilliant. And I'd play okay. And then as soon as it came down to the nitty gritty, I needed the money. And I was just bottling it all the time. You know, five all, three darts in my hand. If I win, I won a grand. Wow, it's a mum's wage. And I'd miss it, lose a game, and I'm back to, you know, what we're going to do. That must be hard travelling home from these events. You know, you've, you've yeah. practiced all week for this, and then it, as darts and in, in three darts, it goes one way or another, and you're travelling back, and you must be starting to question, "I'm doing all this practice, but I'm not getting any reward." So, was it frustrating time? It was. Um, I had it with me, my family. I've always told my family that I will make it in darts, and I've said this for four years. My grandma, my granddad, my mum, trust me, I'm gonna make it in darts. And during that time, so it was only 18 months ago. I remember having a conversation with my grandma and she was like, when are you going to actually start making some money without being bingy? You know, you've been doing this now four or five years. Um, you know, you're struggling. Are you, are you actually going to make it? And I said, yeah, I will do. because I need to sort a few things out. And coming back home to, to Kirsty, my partner, it was another weekend away from the kids, coming back with nothing, uh, wasn't making TV events, which is where the big money is. And it, it was hard for me and all the family. Um, but you've got to believe in, you, in yourself and I've always believed in my own ability and uh, luckily uh, it came good in the end. We always say darts is a mental game, you know, the mental yeah. aspect is a massive part of it and yeah. when people around you are starting to doubt whether you can make money out of it, it must be hard to, to keep that belief in yourself, thinking yeah. even if it's not tomorrow or next week, one day I will be a success in darts, but that never left you. Yeah, no, um, the thing with me is if I want to do something, I will do it. Um, I think it's probably one of my strong attributes in life. I'll never give up. Um, I want to be the best at everything I do, whether it's, I don't know, whether it's my old job, whether it's playing golf, whether it's being a dad, I want to be the best at anything that I do. And I always believe that one day I will make it. And even though people doubted me, I doubted myself at times, you know what I mean? But I, I battled on, believed, and uh, yeah, it came good in the end. So 5th of September, 2018, Possibly the day that your life began to change. It didn't change on the day, but winning your first PDC Pro Tour title, what did that feel like? And tell us a story of you know, the money. Yeah, um, so I'd won a, a youth tour before. I played in the youth final. Um, I won a challenge tour. The next step for me then was to, to win a Pro Tour. And like I said, that year I was struggling. I'd not really got past the first or second round in many events. Um, and the time had come where something had to happen quick or it was well, game over for me really. I was thinking about going back to work. 
people have interviewed me and you know they've brought the situation about the money. Yeah, I had 20 quid. Um, I had absolutely nothing. I had no money in life. I had 20 pounds in my name. And yeah, I turned up to this event and it was kind of like last chance saloon. And um, just everything went well that day. I played absolutely phenomenal. Something that I've been practicing for six months. I've been playing at that level and it's never happened. And I think when I finally hit rock bottom, me um, ability kind of came out and uh, yeah, I won it, won 10 grand and that was the start of a completely new mindset and a new Nathan. Yeah, as you said there, a lot of players, you know, they're all, they're all capable players and yeah. it comes together on the day for them and they win a title. But for you, it's, that's been the catalyst for what you've gone on to do. So what do you think is the difference between you just winning that title on that day and going on to do what you've done since? I think the pressure of not needing to, I know it wasn't a life changing amount of money, but for me at that time it was. Um, so I think the fact that the weight off my shoulders that I finally won a tournament, I finally got past the second round, um, I've got that security for the next three or four months in the bank. Um, the belief that my family have seen me win a, a men's tournament, they now know I can do it. I think just a load of different things happened, a um, combination of things and um, the confidence I had after that final was, uh, after that win was, was unbelievable. Um, I took it down to, to my head, I think it was, and I played really well, Wade beat me. Um, oh, was it Wade? Yeah, it was Wade, he beat me but I played well. Um, and I felt confidence going into the, to the World Championships and again it was another opportunity for me to, to show people what I can do and because I had the confidence and the ability um, I believe that on the Worlds, that's when it, that had come good. So obviously darts fans knew all about you going to the World Championship, but at Ali Pali you, you showed the world uh, who you are and how good you can be. Just tell us about how that tournament went for you. Yeah, oh, well, that was a life-changing one for me. Um, the draw came out and I played the young Gert Nentjes, so for me it was an absolute perfect draw because he'd never played there, neither had I. Uh, I knew there'd be a lot of nerves, um, even when your first game, 15 grand is a hell of a lot of money to, well, Gert's 20, me with a young family was a lot of money, so it was going to be tough, um, but I think I had a bit more experience than him, and obviously came out on top, but then it was a Gezi game, I, th I think that, and he stated it recently in his interview that, you know, um, I probably kick-started his career because he was 2-0 up against me, um, he was a better player by a mile. And then um, I took a big, he missed a bull to beat me 3-0 and I took the shot out to, to nick the set and to go 2-1. The crowd got on his back and I came out on top and won 3-2 and he just won the Grand Slam. You know what I mean? He's one of the best players in the world and I could beat him on the biggest stage of all. So after that, I was just on cloud nine. Every game I played and after that was a bonus. Uh, the draw opened up and uh, I just grabbed the opportunity with both hands and, and had a really good run. You like a flutter, so Vegas was the perfect venue for you to go on the first World Series event. It was, yeah. We, um, we was in this practice room, me and Martin, and we got the call um, that I'd been invited to, to the World Series and he didn't tell me which one. <coughs> and I was praying it was Vegas. So I said, I like a bit of a, bit of a flutter, I've always wanted to go there. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's a Vegas one. I was like, wow, um, you know, six months ago. I had nothing, now I'm going on a plane to Vegas, playing in a tournament with the best players in the world. So, yeah, it was been, I, was, I couldn't wait to get out there and uh, obviously I enjoyed the, the week out there as well. And do you think your enjoyment of being there, did that spur you on to play so well and win the title? A million percent. Um, I try and play with a smile on my face all the time. I try and be happy, you know. I look at how my life was 12 months ago to now. How can I not be happy, you know, when I'm walking on that stage? So. I think that's what, what won me that tournament in Vegas. I was like, I'm in Vegas playing darts on a massive stage with the best players in the world. Wow. And I was, just, I was so happy to be there, just to be involved in it. And uh, I think that's what kind of got me over the line and, and I won the tournament. Sure. And then moving on from that, you've maybe been a bit hard on yourself with how your uh, results have gone recently. But is that a case of, you know, you've worked so hard to get to where you are, and it could be easy to say, like, if when you lose games, well, look how far I've come. But yeah. you want you want more, don't you? You want to keep pushing yourself to be better. Every tournament I play in, I believe I can win it. Um, I think me me performance levels 
I probably, you know, might be being a big head, but I think probably the top five in the world. Um, I'm, reg I'm often averaging 100 and very rarely drop below that, that mark. Um, everyone's just playing better against me. Um, it's been hard over the last couple of months because I've, I've not really played a bad game. I've had one bad game, which was a good Grand Slam against Glen, which I deserve to get beaten. Um, but apart from that, I've not, I can't look back at any game and go, I've done that wrong, I've done this wrong. I've played really well. Um, just people are playing good against me. It's just one of the things you've got to take on the chin and, you know, hopefully the World Championships help my luck will change a little bit and uh, the results will start going my way. And at the World Championship, you've got no money to defend, so that's, yeah, that's another, nice, isn't it? another shot <laughs> yeah. to move up the rankings. Um, yeah. How are you feeling going into that compared to how you felt last year? Um, it's different, <laughs> shall we say. Um, I'm still looking forward to it like I did last year. I can't wait to get back there. It's the one tournament a year that my family comes with me. Um, so I'm a little girl over there to uh, able to watch me. Um, and it, it's just a special tournament. And I'm going back there this year with, there's a lot of expectation on my shoulders. Um, but I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm just going to go up there like I did last year, soak it all in. I'm still new, you know what I mean? It's only my second time being there. So I'm still going to enjoy it for what it is. It's the world and uh, hopefully I'll play well and hopefully I can have another good one.